All right, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Sonko here. Welcome back to the channel. Only got a little bit of news stuff for you today because it is December 1st and through December 9th, it's going to be Sonko Fest. So it's going to be a whole lot of live streaming, but I still want to bring you guys some news from time to time. So I'm going to bring you these uh, few news articles and talk about them a little bit. The first one is ICOs use sponsored reviews to attract investors. Well, who would have thought? Um, but I want to talk about this article a little bit. I want to read it first and then talk about it. So although the uh, 2018 cryptocurrency bull trend has humbled many self-crypto experts, uh, the business of sponsored cryptocurrency reviews has continued to boom. Um, so basically, they just try to target social media in any way they possibly can. Uh, for one example, Hacken paid 7500 to Christopher Green, an alternative media television host, to review the ICO for his followers. The company chose Green from a list of 200 prominent social media personalities within the cryptocurrency niche, which uh, admittedly, I'm probably on one of those <clears throat> And probably received that email at some point. I'm not sure exactly which um, which ICO, but who, who's counting at this point? Um, and he went on to produce a 25-minute video claiming that Hacken was a huge market opportunity with the potential to yield, yield a thousand X returns. And the video has 90,000 views and does not explicitly state that Green received remuneration in exchange for producing the video. So instead, it simply directs users to a disclaimer on his website that concedes that uh, he may receive compensation for the product and services. So, um, you know, and the article goes on about this sort of thing, but I can easily talk about this as well as I'm a cryptocurrency YouTuber. Am I the most popular one? Absolutely not. But uh, you bet that uh, I receive a lot of emails. Uh, they get a hold of your email and they send you just ICO after ICO versus uh, this exchange, like like shill this exchange, this, that, or the other thing, how much would it cost for an advertisement, this, that, and the other thing. You get them all the time. Uh, I bet if anybody watching this made their own cryptocurrency YouTube channel after a couple hundred subscribers, you'd probably be on the list as well. Um, and they never say how much they're going to pay. Uh, or, or anything, and I pretty much delete all of them. I think most YouTubers do. Uh, I remember even um, uh, Doug Polk, he showed uh, his um, uh, Gmail once, and it showed just a tons of ICOs, and that's basically the gist of it. Um, you know, another thing they like to do is they sort of pre-write an article for ICOs, and then they slap them on website after website after website, and they'll send that pre-written article to various news websites or blog websites. And if you know, so if when you read it, it's, it's the exact same thing on every website. So they basically just send it to say, hey, if you post this advertisement, uh, which is essentially an advertisement on your blog, as if you're blogging about it, um, you know, we'll give you such and such. Uh, but the problem with these is that you, you never know which one is actually real. You never know which one's fake. You never know which one's like a phishing ad to get you to actually even click on the link in the first place to give you malware or something. You have no idea. And the, the best you can do is sometimes look them up um, you know, with Google or something, just Google what, what you've seen in the email. And a lot of times it actually still doesn't exist. Or like you'll, again, you'll see it on a bunch of vlog websites uh, or blog websites that um, are just being paid for it. So it, it's become kind of a problem. And even people that shill them, it's become kind of a problem as well. So it's hard to even talk about a, a new coin. It's hard to talk about an ICO that you're um, personally um psyched about i suppose as, as if anybody's even psyched about icos anymore who knows but uh either way without being you know called out for being a shill or just shilling it getting paid and then not saying that you got paid for it uh so there's a big issue in that and i don't suppose i have any kind of final thoughts on it but uh it is it is kind of a major problem and uh, if you have any kind of youtube where you talk about cryptocurrency you've likely received a ton of these offers and you'll know what i'm talking about as soon as you receive them too there's just so many of them and most of them are uh russian or chinese and i'm not trying to bash those people but i i can't read what they're saying anyway uh, the grammar is really bad and uh there's just a bunch of shady links you're like yeah that doesn't look like a pretty good link to me so i'm not even gonna bother and then the problem is too is that i could be like okay yeah pay me for this ICO and then I say yeah no I love this ICO it's amazing like in this uh, huge market opportunity potential to year yield thousand X returns yeah totally and then it become a total flop and then 
you actually lose your money. You put in a thousand dollars because hey, Mr. Sacco said to buy this ICO, and you put in a thousand dollars, and then it, it dies out. And that made me feel really bad. I mean, that that's people's money you're messing with at that point, like real money. Uh, so you you got to be sure about these sort of things. So moving on to an interesting fuddy article that I want to read is a blockchain just hot air. New study finds zero percent success rate. So a team from the U.S. Agency of International Development examined 43 implementations of distributed ledger technology across the sector. The various DLT projects covered a wide variety of tasks, included uh, NGOs, contractors, and government agencies. And we found a proliferation of press releases, white papers, and persuasively written articles. However, we found no documentation or evidence of the results blockchain purported to have achieved in these claims. Uh, that's probably looking at a bunch of ICOs or white papers of cryptos. And, um, you know, uh, yeah, they probably didn't achieve their claims because I'd say like nine out of 10 just do nothing. And it's just word salad in the ICO. So this kind of goes with the ICOs as well. And that uh, they're coming out with this, oh, no, 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 it's going to do this, it's going to do that. And sooner or later, the technology is going to work, and they're going to do what they say they're going to do. It's really a matter of trial and error. It's people are just sort of throwing, uh, you know, stuff on the wall and see if it, see if it sticks. Um, so when the team conducting the study reached out to several blockchain vendors directly, they faced a stony silence, and none of them responded to requests to share data on program results. So despite all the hype about how blockchain will bring unheralded transparency to processes and operations in low trust environments, the industry is itself opaque. So while vendors are eager to push the value of blockchain, it'll add to a process many clients do not know the questions to ask when assessing suitability. So again, uh, you know, a lot of blockchains, admittedly, admittedly, though, a lot of blockchains are just totally useless. A lot of coins that are coming out just totally useless. They, they never fulfill what they're actually going to do or they get shut down this way or that way. But uh, is blockchain just hot air? No, I would say not. So blockchain is sort of just honestly, it's a slow version of a database, but decentralized so that everybody can put a little bit of information into that blockchain and save it. Uh, contracts, whatever information, and you can put it there and save it, and it really can't be changed, so it's always going to be there. You know, you can do a lot of automated things with blockchain as well. Um, you know, like if, if just, just automated blockchain in the sense of, uh, you know, if, if you didn't... Um, you know, if you bought a flight ticket and then you didn't fly, you could get an automatic refund of it, uh, which I don't ever think happens in the flight world. I'm just throwing an example out there. And you could automatically get refunded. It would be on the blockchain. So it, it would just automatically do it. There would be a contract in there that they, they couldn't really stop and you couldn't stop. Um, but so so 0% success rate, uh, I wouldn't say that, not at all. I would say that there's a pretty low success rate, but we can see that Bitcoin is a great blockchain and, you know, provides provides the proof uh, that you hold a little bit of blockchain in the world and it is moving along. And, um, you know, sooner or later, the technology is going to go up. We're, we're like the internet in the 80s or 90s and that uh, every website totally sucks and um you know everybody's on aol chat rooms uh asking for asl so moving on to the next article is a summary of a bitmain lawsuit yet another bitmain lawsuit again boom pepsi one thousand dollars see I, I i say when i make money from you know it's just it's it's thousand dollars per sip guys so i mean that's i'm just saying uh pepsi's great on uh, you know whatever pepsi um, anyway, so Bitmain is going to get sued again. And I don't know how many of these lawsuits coming at Bitmain, because it seems like every week I read, I read one Bitcoin, uh, Bitmain lawsuit, at least. And how many of these are actually successful? I don't know. It's hard to find out the outcome of them. Uh, but so in a brief summary, the plaintiff alleged that Bitmain marketed and sold ASIC miners that were pre-configured to use the customers as electricity to generate crypto for Bitmain's own benefit. So the plaintiff bought his ASIC in January 2018, so not that long ago. Uh, he says it was hard to configure. Okay, um, just, you just watch a YouTube video, but okay. Um, and it came pre-configured to operate in full power mode. So at which time it mined for the benefit of Bitmain using the plaintiff's electricity. So the complaint alleges that there are over 100 class members and the amount in controversy exceeds 5 million. Highly doubt that only 100 people generated $5 million uh, with uh, 
their ASICs, but who knows? Uh, so what he's trying to say is that the plaintiff's first count is that Bitmain used unfair competition, which was unlawful, fraudulent, deceptive, untrue, or misleading advertising and offends public policy, is immoral, unethical, oppressive, yada, yada. The second count is for unjust enrichment, saying that they benefit of the expense of the plaintiff. And the third count is for, con uh, is for conversion, stating Bitmain converted the use of plaintiff and class members' ASIC devices and requests disgorgement. So the idea here, in case you guys didn't get that, is that the, the ASICs, um, you know, they're, they're sort of like a router. You, you just connect to them like like via your router in a sense. And they're, they're, they're pre-configured um, with Bitmain uh, wallets and Bitmain addresses, so it mines directly to to Bitmain for Bitmain. As soon as you, if you, if you basically, if you plug it in and you turn it on, um, and every and your router is good to go, it's just going to automatically start mining for Bitmain until you go in there and change uh, the configuration a little bit, uh, which is a little weird that is a little weird because you wouldn't be able to really even test your hash rate if it's connected to somebody else you would look up your address and then you wouldn't see it so that that's kind of weird uh but uh i, I suppose you could i suppose you could but uh yeah so basically it's just pre-configured and uh they they might get sued for that and that that's interesting and funny because i like talking about the bitmain lawsuits because um uh, screw bitmain really seriously they screw it man but either way i hope you guys enjoyed this short video um you know i started kind of early on this video and it did, there wasn't a lot of news for the day out just yet and um but um you know i'll still try to make you guys as many news videos as possible throughout december 1st through december 9th but uh right now it's time for sacco fest but i hope you guys enjoyed it and i'll see you guys later